It's the preview show. It's the No Name Ever podcast. The new season is almost here. But this year, it will be different. Some will be desperate to get back to the turf. For others, they'll be nervous to be in a crowd. For some, this is the longest day of gone until you see Bernie play live. For others around the world, watching on TV is the norm. But seeing the empty stands has been hard. Whether you're heading to the ground or tuning in at home, we are all part of the Clarets family. And we are here for you. No Nay Never was set up to help the community. To help those who can't get to the turf. Or who don't have the right TV channels. To feel connected. Closer. Part of the game. And as long as you are listening, we will keep talking. And talking. And talking. About the highs of historic wins at Old Trafford. And the lows of regular defeats at the Etihad. About what the past has given us. And about what the future might hold. We do it because we're passionate about our club. We do it because we're fans first and foremost. We do it for all clarets out there. We do it for you. Hello and welcome to another season of the preview show brought to you by the Known and Never podcast. The team is back for a brand new season of all things claret and this year the none and never family has expanded we will be back with you for the 2021 2022 season with two podcasts per week and a newsletter so stay tuned for more information about how we will be bringing you lots of clarets content for the rest of this season i'm your host natalie bromley but joining me as ever for a third season of the preview show is the main man himself, the headliner of the preview show, Mr. Dave Statman Roberts. Dave, good evening. It's good to be back. Yeah, thanks, Natalie. It's uh, been a couple of months, but it seems to have uh, flown by and we're ready for a, a brand new season, aren't we? We certainly are. I've got to say, I did enjoy the break over the summer. Um, I think the season before with lockdown and project restart and a very short summer season and then not really a pre-season and then the very strange season as it was last year, I think we were all ready for a good break. But that break has done us the power of good and listeners, we are raring to go. We cannot wait to tell you what we have lined up. So Let's start with um, the preview show. Now, we're going to talk to you a little bit later on about a new project that we have ongoing in the Known and Ever family. But the Known and Ever podcast will be back in the same format it was last year. We will be bringing you two shows a week. On Tuesday, we'll be bringing you the analysis show where we will look back on the last Claret's performance, discuss all of the talking points and dissect what's going on in the wider club. And on Fridays, Dave and I will be bringing you the preview show, which this season has got a new look. Because, Dave, we like to keep them updated, don't we? We like to keep it fresh. Uh, Yeah, we've made one or two changes. A few. uh... This is it. I was going to say a, a, a few, a few things, a few features have gone out the window, and a few new ones have come in. So yes, it's uh, it's all fresh, but I think there'll be a um, a familiar feel to it. Let's say. Excellent. Look at that, listeners. It's our first episode back. We're a bit rusty. Um, I was saying, and Dave was just nodding at me on the video. I was like, Dave, we're on the radio. You have to talk. It's like, oh yeah, sorry. We forget what we're doing. Same old preview show. New season, new gaffes. I love it. Um, Well, your preview show, listeners, is of course going to have your regular features. There's a few new things put in there to freshen up a bit. But we will start with the stats um, and a look at our next opponents. We will be bringing back, of course, the much-loved quiz. And then finally, we will be updating you on the No Nay Never Fantasy Premier League. Goodness me, Dave, let's get going. Where on earth do we start? Because normally we start with a quiz answer. But of course, very sensibly at the end of last season, we did avoid setting a quiz question in because we didn't want our listeners to spend all summer scratching their heads and wondering what on earth the answer was. Um, so what, 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 do we, what do we talk about in a quiz answer then, Dave? Uh, well, we did something a little bit different over the summer. We had um, our No Nay Never's first summer quiz event during the Euros, and we had eight intrepid mm. contestants who put their names forward. And after four quarterfinal episodes, 
and two head-to-head semi-finals, there was a nail-biting final episode in which Adam Dennett triumphed over Tom Whitaker to become our first quiz champion and was crowned as our very own Pope Master. Excellent stuff. Well, speaking of Adam Dennett, we do have some very exciting news for you because we decided, given he was our first Portmaster and considering his fantastic um, appearances on the show, that we'd just sign him up. We have been, or the clients themselves, Dave, may not be very active in the transfer window, but we are. And we are delighted to secure Adam's services for this season's podcast. He will be joining us um, on the analysis show um, and he will be uh, part of the regular panellists, which is really exciting to learn. Um, that wasn't his prize, though. A lot of people were suggesting that maybe he won his place on the on the panel um, as part of his port master, but that's not the case. It's his pure talent and his pure charisma that's got him on the panel. Um, so you're going to be hearing from him quite regularly. Um, I think he's been earmarked, I think, to start off with in the analysis show. Um, but he was a crowd favourite, wasn't he, Dave, when he joined us um, a couple of times for the uh, previous show. So I think as we get into the nitty-gritty of the Premier League and um, Fantasy Football League. I think we'll get him on here again, Dave, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. He very, uh, did very well. Just missed out, didn't he, on the uh, Fantasy Premier League. But I think he'll uh, be a, a good good addition to the team um, and certainly get him on for uh, for the preview show as well. I think we've uh, had quite a few guests on for the preview show, had a few three-ways. So we see how, uh, how that works out. Um, if, by the way, for our listeners, if there were any of the Pope Master quiz episodes that you missed, uh, they are still available to listen to on the podcast platform of your choice or to watch on YouTube. Um, and a big thank you as well to Burnley FC Club commentator Phil Bird uh, for agreeing to step in and be our quiz master. He did a, a sterling job for us over the summer. He absolutely did. And that's just reminded me of my to-do list, um, which producer Matt keeps increasing on a daily basis and that I need to um, I need to send... Uh, I need to send him a, th- a thank you gift for, for doing that for us. So I will do that. If you are listening, Papa Bird, I will send something in the post. Um, well, you're going to have to keep listening to the end of the show to discover the first quiz question, which is going to have a twist this season. I'm sorry, listeners. I try and keep Statman Dave in check, but sometimes he just goes rogue and he, he goes off on one. Um, but do stay tuned because we're going to be bringing back the quiz and going to be setting you a brand new question for the brand new season. Premier League, head to head. So let's get on with it. Uh, Dave, let's start the first section of the preview show, which is, of course, looking ahead to the Clarets' first game of the new season. It's Brighton and Hove Albion at home. It's Saturday the 14th of August, a 3pm kickoff, and not broadcast live in the UK. My goodness, we spent all of last season telling our listeners what channel to look out for them. It's, uh, it's back to normal, and it's a Saturday 3 o'clock kickoff. Um, so why don't you kick us off, Dave, with the history of this fixture? Yeah, well, this season we're going to be taking a look at the head-to-head record between the clubs in Premier League games, uh, either at home or away, depending on the venue the match is being played at. Uh, Burnley and Brighton Hove Albion have met four times in Premier League matches played at Turf Moor. And although the first of these meetings wasn't until the last few seasons, actually quite recently, um, Burnley have won one, drawn two and lost one of Brighton's recent top flight trips to Turf Moor. Uh, The only occasions the two teams have met in the top flight have been in these four recent Premier League campaigns. And so our only top flight home win against the Seagulls was back in December 2018. That was a 1-0 win with James Tarkovsky scoring the only goal of the game after the ball rebounded in off his midriff from Jack Cork's shot. Uh, Brighton's only Premier League victory at Turf Moor and their only top flight win as well uh, here was on the final day of the 2019-20 Premier League season. Uh, That match took place at the end of July 2020, later than usual because of uh, Project Restart. Uh, Eve Bissouma opened the scoring for the visitors, but Chris Wood equalised just before half time. However, it was Aaron Connolly who scored the winner five minutes into the second half. Uh, Last season's meeting at Turf Moor ended in a 1-1 draw. That was back in February when Johan Berg-Gudmundsen's second half goal cancelled out Lewis Dunk's opener from the first half. Excellent stuff. Memory match! Um, Second of our history sections then, Dave, we've got a new feature. Is this this a new feature? Is this just a renamed fixture? Uh, Feature, sorry, it's memory match. Memory match. What is that all about? Uh, Alliteration again. 
just for you. Uh, for, <laughs> for this for this season, we're going to focus on one memory match for each episode, uh, which will be a past meeting between the two clubs at the same venue as the forthcoming match. Um, as we'd already featured our one and only Premier League home win over Brighton, uh, when we had our highlight section last season, we decided to pick a different game this time. Uh, the match we've chosen is a 3-0 home win from the 1995-96 season. Uh, Burnley have been relegated back to the third tier. That was the Ensley Insurance League Division 2. Uh, Premier League had started by that stage. Um, and by the time this match came around in October, the Clarets had made a reasonable start to the new season. Um, I've got some key events from the match as a reminder for people. Uh, the managers were Jimmy Mullen and Liam Brady for Brighton. Uh, the attendance at Turf Moor was 9,016 and the Burnley captain was Peter Swan. Uh, Burnley got off to a good start. We attacked the B-hole end in the first half and uh, Kurt Nogan passed to Ted McMinn, who sent a cross from the left towards the far post, where David Ayres headed in to open the scoring in the fourth minute. Um, and then it was captain Peter Swan who was on the score sheet. Uh, following a short corner routine on the right, the ball was played into the six-yard box where Peter Swan headed in Burnley's second. So after just over half an hour, Burnley were 2-0 up. And shortly afterwards, it was three. Um, a former Brighton player, Kurt Nogan, um, he got the goal. Uh, Marlon Beresford's long kick found its way to Ayres via a stray pass. And he played in Nogan, who finished with a low shot from 18 yards. So Burnley were 3-0 up at half-time and, uh, and coasting. And it wasn't all plain sailing in the second half, though. Uh, Warren Joyce uh, went in for a 50-50 challenge with uh, Peter Smith. Uh, the referee decided that Warren Joyce was at fault and sent him off. I remember the uh, looking back at the highlights, it was Dave Metcalf who was commentating back then, rather confused, I think, with uh, whether he'd been sent off or not, and he uh, he had been sent off. Um, and it was the victory lifted us to fifth place in the table from seventh, and things were looking OK at that stage of the season. However, a drop in form and a run of four consecutive league defeats in January and February of 1996 resulted in Jimmy Mullen being replaced with Adrian Heath taking over after a short care caretaker spell from Clive Middlemass. Wow, gosh, it's, the, it's definitely a trip down memory lane, is that? Um, it's quite interesting. I, I didn't, that quite shocked me then hearing you um, hear Dave Metcalf's name. Um, a very close family friend of mine. Um, he was he he helped helped raise me. There you go. Nice little bit of uh, of memory there for uh, for me as well on a personal level. Um, moving on I then, Dave. I think it was him. I'll have to double check it. I it think must it, have he been. certainly did commentary in the late nineties, didn't he? Yeah, he did. When I was little, um, he did everything. He did all the hospital radio. He did yeah, TBR that's right. when that started, and he did yeah, he did all sorts. So yeah, I I. I I remember him doing so much Burnley stuff when we were little kids. So, yeah, good stuff. Uh, oh, that was nice. That was a nice little personal thing. I didn't see that coming. Um, moving on then, Dave. Um, next section, On This Day. What is this all about? Yes, a new section. Um, we're looking back on matches that have been played on the same day as the forthcoming match. So we're looking at matches played on the 14th of August in years past. Uh, and Burnley have played eight previous matches on this date, um, and all of those games have taken place since 1971. Incredibly, the Clarets are unbeaten in these eight games, winning five and drawing three, which of course means nothing at all for this weekend, unless you're particularly superstitious about these things. Um, two of the previous matches we've played on 14th of August have been season openers. Uh, they were a 2-2 draw at Cardiff City in Division 2 in 1971, which was Burnley's first match back in the second tier after a 24-season stint in the top flight. Uh, Burnley trailed 2-0 at half-time, but came from behind to earn a point, thanks to goals from Frank Casper and Martin Dobson. Uh, the other season opener was a 2-1 home win over Port Vale in 1993. Uh, Warren Joyce scored both Burnley's goals, one in each half, and that season ended with a memorable playoff victory at Wembley over Stockport County. Uh, the most recent bur time Burnley have played on the 14th of August was nine years ago. Uh, that was in 2012, and it was a 3-1 away win at Port Vale in the first round of the League Cup. Uh, goal scorers that day for Burnley were Chris McCann, Charlie Austin and Dean Marnie. And that was nine years ago since we played on the 14th of August. Excellent. Dean Marnie. Um, and then finally then, um, another new feature for the history section, and that is a club connection. Club Connection! 
Yes, another new section, another new feature we've introduced for this season's preview show is Club Connection. Uh, we'll be taking a look at the players and occasionally managers um, who have spent time at both clubs, with a particular focus on one individual. Um, when we look back at the players who've played for Burnley and Brighton, there are some very memorable names. Uh, we handpicked four players and we posted a quick poll on Twitter last weekend to get a snapshot of who our followers wanted us to focus on. Uh, the four options were uh, Willie Irvin, Kurt Nogan, Stephen Ward and Ashley Barnes. And the winner of the poll was Ashley Barnes. He got 37.6%. Um, but as he's a current player, um, we're going to bend our own rules to this new feature, even though we've only just started it. And as well as, showca- as, well as showcasing Ashley Barnes, we're also going to look at the second place player, uh, who was Willie Irvin. He got just over 25% of the vote. Uh, Kurt Nogan was in third place and Stephen Ward was in fourth. Um, There's three members of the current Burnley squad who previously played for the Seagulls. The Claret signed midfielder Dale Stevens, as you will recall, from Brighton in last summer's transfer window. Uh, And Chris Wood also had a loan spell with Brighton during the 2010-2011 season. That's uh, going back a little while. Uh, But the third player in the trio of former Seagulls is the current in the current Burnley squad is Ashley Barnes. Um, He's another player who we signed directly from Brighton. Um, After a successful spell on the South Coast, Sean Dyche dipped into the transfer market in January 2014. And although Ashley Barnes only played a cameo role in the second half of Burnley's 2013-14 promotion season, he's gone on to establish himself as a Premier League striker. Uh, Ashley Barnes scored 53 goals in 170 appearances for Brighton between 2010 and 2014. That was initially in League One, but then predominantly in the Championship. Uh, So far, he's scored 46 goals for Burnley in 223 appearances. Um, He was also sent off in a match between Brighton and Burnley. Uh, That was down at the Amex in December 2011. Brighton had already been reduced to 10 men in the sixth minute, and when Ashley Barnes saw red after just 12 minutes, the home side had to play the rest of the game with just nine men. Uh, Kieran Trippier scored the only goal, and Burnley won 1-0. And would you like to hear about the uh, other former players Claret, who also represented the Seagulls. Certainly would, certainly would. Okay, well, that's uh, Willie Irvin. Um, He'd become a Northern Ireland international even before he got his chance to play in Burnley's first team uh, towards the end of the 1962-1963 season. After scoring at Arsenal on his Burnley first team debut in the penultimate game of the season, he followed that up with a hat-trick at Turf Moor against uh, Birmingham City in the final league game. He went on to forge an impressive strike partnership with Andy Lockhead, and over the course of six seasons until his departure in 1968, Willie Irvin racked up 97 goals in just 148 appearances for the Clarets. After that, following a spell of just over three years at Preston North End, uh, Willie joined Division 3 Brighton, initially on loan in 1971, before a permanent transfer. He helped them to promotion in the 1971-72 season, and earned the nickname Late Goal Willie before leaving for Halifax Town after scoring 27 goals for the Seagulls in all competitions. Um, His goal-scoring exploits for Burnley in the 1960s are what Burnley fans will remember him for, which quite rightly earned him the status as one of the club's all-time legends. Ah, oh, good stuff. There's some great memories in there, Dave. Well, that just rounds up the history of this fixture. But before we move on to the second half of the stat section and we look at bringing things bang up to date, we're going to pause there and give you some information about what's new and what's coming this season. I mentioned at the top of the show that the Nona and Ever family has expanded this year and we are delighted to announce that a familiar face has rejoined the Nona and Ever team. Well, a couple of familiar faces, actually. Jamie Smith, the original host of the Nona and Ever podcast, has returned to the fold after a, gosh, four or five year absence now. Um, and he has launched the new no, no, never newsletter. Um, he will be writing a weekly newsletter which will have um, articles and opinion pieces and interesting, just lots of interesting articles as well about everything that's been happening that week. Um, it's going to feature the quiz question as well. It's going to feature some links to some articles of interest, some letters from um, listeners, and it's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, the non and Never family this season is going to bring you a dual offering. The, the podcast team will stay the same and we'll bring you your 
twice a week podcast and the None and Ever newsletter team will bring you um, some opinion piece direct to your inbox. Now, quite a lot of our listeners have already signed up for this and had their first newsletter this afternoon, which was incredibly exciting. And, and I know Jamie worked really hard to get the first one out there. So if you've not signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Get on that website and get your um, email submitted for subscription. You need to go to no nay never dot substack.com that's s-u-b-s-t-a-c-k none and ever dot substack.com pop your email address in subscribe to the newsletter and you will be just littered with with Claret's content from your favourite known and ever family. So, um, but yeah, we are absolutely delighted to have Jamie back and he's going to be helped on the newsletter team by Adam Howarth, who is our pre- previous producer uh, before we got producer Matt. So yeah, we've, we've got the, we've got the, the family are back together. The band are back together, I think is the expression, isn't it? So yeah, really delighted to have him on board and we're going to really look forward to working with the, the old crew again for the rest of this season. So let's move on, Dave. We're going to bring things right back to the present now. and uh, Yeah, new section for this season. We're kind of bringing together bits and pieces we've done in the uh, Fantasy Premier League section, but basically trying to focus a little bit more on our opponents. Uh, so what we can tell you about uh, Brighton ahead of this weekend's fixture. Uh, Graham Potter took over from Chris Hooton as Brighton's manager after the end of the 2018-19 season. And so he's now spent two full seasons at the helm. After Hewton guided them to safety in a 17th place finish in 2018-19, Potter has presided over 15th and 16th place finishes in the last two seasons. At Brighton mixed and matched their formation quite a bit during last season. Unlike Burnley, who nearly always line up in a 4-4-2 formation, only occasionally referring, uh, reverting to a 4-4-1-1, Brighton have predominantly used either a 3-4-3 or 3-5-2, although they've also tinkered with a variety of other combinations. Uh, Central defender Ben White moved to Arsenal in a big money deal over the summer, so he'll certainly be a loss to Brighton's backline. The Seagulls' one big money signing so far of the summer transfer window is 23-year-old Zambian international midfielder Enoch Mwepu. Uh, He arrived on a four-year deal from Red Bull Salzburg for a fee of around £20 million. Uh, Their only other new face is 21-year-old Dutch goalkeeper, uh, Kjell Sherpen, I think is how you pronounce it, who was signed from Ajax for an undisclosed fee. Uh, we'll be discussing this season's Fantasy Premier League in a little bit more detail later in the show, uh, but Brighton's most influential players for last season's FPL were uh, Leandro Trossard, uh, topped their uh, point scoring with 132, uh, defender Lewis Dunk got 130, uh, playmaker Pascal Gross got 116, uh, striker Neil Mopé, he got 105, and goalkeeper Robert Sanchez got 101 points. Uh, there's one or two injury concerns for Saturday's visitors. Striker Danny Welbeck has been ruled out until at least after the international break, and Tarek Lamptey and Dan Byrne also appear to be ruled out due to injuries. However, uh, Alexis McAllister, who represented Argentina in the Olympics, may be back in contention. He was involved in Brighton's defeat to Spanish side Getafe in a friendly last weekend. Good stuff. Well, at this part of the show, we do also like to give you a little insight from our opposition. And this week, we had the pleasure in speaking to Albion Analytics. Is that how you pronounce it, Dave? Analytics. I'm going to go with that. Albion Analytics, who gave us their thoughts ahead of this weekend's fixture. Hello, this is Liam from Albion Analytics uh, for the No Nay Never podcast and and their listeners. I hope you guys are all well. Just going to give you a bit of a rundown, really, of hopefully what Brighton can sort of bring you um, on Saturday. I apologise for any background noise um, or anything at all. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it. So they've obviously sent me across a few questions. Uh, the, the first one being about our transfer activity and what have I made of it. Um, we've not been too ridiculously active in the transfer market. Uh, the main son who made is Enoch and Wepu um, from RB Salzburg. Um, he looks really strong in pre-season. Um, can do sort of a variety of things out on the right-hand side. So um, sort of on the podcast, we've sort of Ian Marktiv as maybe someone who might stop Dwight McNeil. Um, and that sort of role, Potter's used him in a diamond in pre-season as well as sort of another roles out on, on the right-hand side. Um, quite a good ground jeweller. Um, combines quite well as well. Um, so really exciting to watch him. Um, we've made a few other sort of shrewd signings. Kill Sherpen um, from Ajax, a really good backup keeper that we brought in. Uh, and most recently we brought Karu Mitoma um, over from Japan. He's gone to Belgium, Elton Lone, so we won't see him just yet. Um, 
but again, the sort of typical Brighton fashion, really recruiting from sort of wider leagues. Um, you know, the, the the scouting team is is fantastic, and you know, some of the value for money signings that, that we've made um, is massively down to that. <clears throat> Apologies, um, they're they're really really fantastic. Um, question number two: Am I still supportive of Potter? Um, uh, of course, it's it's a process, and I know that you know people will say trust the process or what are the process are no good. Um, but there's genuinely strong foundations there. Um, you know, excellent between both boxes. Need to be better in both boxes is, is sort of the the lowdown that I give people. Um, yeah, that's obviously something we'll look to improve on this season again. Uh, people will make comments about XG um, conversion, but we dropped for the most points in the league last season uh, for any positions. It was 26 in total. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, which are obviously goals that we had scored and games that we were sort of winning um, and we threw away too many games quite frankly and too many good results so to improve on that um, again will sort of be a massive positive and we did start to build on that in the second half of the season Rob Sanchez came in um, kept a lot more clean sheets I think it was around 1-3 in three when he was in goal um, and he's put up some very good sort of shot stopping numbers I know Nick Pope is obviously always up every season for his sweeper keeping stuff uh, also for sort of the goals he's preventing uh, with the saves as well uh, what do we expect the lineup to be? Is a great question. Obviously, Potter's renowned for you know having a variety of different styles and being unpredictable. Um, but he's largely stuck with him pre-season. Obviously, a lot of it is fitness exercises and isn't always you know what he's planning to do. It's trying to get players minutes uh, in in their legs. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Really, I expect him obviously to switch between systems during the game. Um, particularly intrigued to see the diamond that he used against Luton uh, with him Wepper out on the right, as I mentioned before, where you know there was then two up top with Aaron Connolly, who obviously scored um, in in sort of this this fixture a couple of seasons back on on the final day. He got the winner. Um, so I would quite like to see Connolly and Mapai. I think they complement each other quite well. Um, and a chance to get Wepper out, out on the sort of the right flank, I think, would be be really good fun. Um, obviously, Terry Lumpty won't be back yet for us. He's still injured, but we've got Sonny March back out on the left, so he'll provide a real good crossing threat. Um, so looking forward to, to seeing him back again. Do I expect Brighton to do any better or worse in this season? Um, God knows. I, I think based on the second half of last season, um, a lot stronger than the first half. I think our average was about 1.3 uh, three points per game. It was averaging to about 50 points our, our second half of the season form. So, um, you know, from sort of Christmas onwards. Um, and I see no reason why those foundations would have changed. If anything, we've probably got stronger players back in. Um, in terms of our squad depth as well, we've you know obviously had a chance to take more recruitment, um, also make more signings from a recruitment perspective. Um, so I, I would hope that we can improve on that. We've only had bottom six finishes, which isn't too much of a bother for me where we finish. Um, it'd be nice to break 41 points. We've hit that over the last two seasons. We did finish well clear of the, the bottom three in the end. I know that Burnley are obviously the, the team below us, but um, to kick on and break 41 for me would, would be a better sign of progression because obviously the, the league table sort of fluctuates. Um, yeah, every season. Um, and the match prediction is the last one. Um, we don't normally seem to do fantastically well on our opening days. Um, and we don't all, always normally seem to do too well against Burnley. Um, so uh, I'd, be, I'd be content to come in with a point. I think, you know, start the season, um, you know, it, it's more of a game I think, that you don't want to lose more than a must win. Um, we've got quite a favourable sort of opening set of fixtures in terms of the, the opponents that we'll be facing. Um, so it's not, I don't think there's too much sort of pend on, on this first game. So I'll, I'll go for one all, um, go for a nice score draw. Um, and I'd like to see Aaron Connolly score again for us. He's looked quite lively in pre season, running in behind. It's obviously how he scored a goal at Turf Moor a couple of seasons back. Um, and obviously, I would say Chris Wood uh, for Burnley, but I know he's ineligible due to his uh, Olympic appearances. Um, so I, I think anything off of a Dwight McNeil um, delivery would, would, would be unsurprising, quite possibly from a set piece, given how sort of poor we were from those last season. Um, I hope that answers all your, all your questions pretty well, guys. Um, thank you guys ever so much for having me on the podcast. I wish you the best of luck in 36 of your 38 games uh, this season, of course not including Saturday and uh, the reverse fixture when we play uh, at, at the Amex. I wish you, of course, the, the worst of luck, as I expect you, you do to me too. Um, but thank you guys very much for having me. And then final section then, Dave, we have some referee details, do we? Uh, we do, yes, that's uh, been announced now. We know that David Coote from Nottingham will take charge of Burnley's opening match of the season. Uh, in total, he's refereed 12 past Burnley matches, and that's going all the way back to a 3-3 draw against Sheffield Wednesday at Turf Moor in October 2012. Uh, there haven't been any red cards for either side in any of these games, although perhaps there should have been, uh, and I'll mention that later. Uh, Burnley have won five, drawn four, and lost three, so we have a, a decent record with him in charge. Um, David Coote had the whistle for three of our matches last season, all of which were in the Premier League. Uh, they were the defeat against Newcastle United at St James's Park earlier in the season, 
uh, our home defeat to Chelsea, uh, but he was also the referee for our vital 2-0 away win at Fulham in May, which sealed our place in the top division for yet another season. Uh, despite the win, quite how Fulham goalkeeper Alphonse Ariola avoided a red card from David Coote uh, and VAR Peter Banks, despite handling the ball outside his penalty area, remains a, ris- a mystery to most of us. Um, a new addition to the Premier League select one group of officials for this season is the Australian Jared Gillett. Um, he'll be the video assistant referee for our match on Saturday. And out of interest, the other three officials to join the select one list, who we may be hearing about later in the season, are Michael Salisbury from Lancashire, Tony Harrington from Cleveland and John Brooks from Leicestershire. Excellent. Now, as ever, Dave, some things don't change. And I know you don't want to leave it there because you like to treat our listeners. So why don't you delve dive down, down into that bank and let our listeners have your miscellaneous stat of the week? Yeah, Burnley will begin the club's 123rd league season on Saturday. And it will also be the 59th season Burnley have spent in the top flight of English football. Following our promotion from the Championship in 2015-16, it will also be our sixth consecutive Premier League season. Uh, There's a couple of uh, important milestones to look forward to before the new year. The club's 5,000th league match is scheduled to take place against Manchester United at Old Trafford on the 28th of December. And the previous match at home to Everton on Boxing Day will see Turf Moor as the stage for our 2,500th home league game since the Football League came into existence in 1888. Of course, postponements and rearrangements may still affect these milestone games, but we'll be keeping tabs on that and flag it up again nearer to the time. Good stuff. So how are you feeling about the first game of the season, Dave? I mean, Brighton at home, start of a new season, crowds back at Turf Moor. I don't think we could have asked for a better start, could we? Um, yeah, we obviously could, could be playing a, a, a Manchester City or a Manchester United or a, a Liverpool where you weren't expected to get anything out of it. Um, I think the game comes with its own pressures. I think there'll be... Um, a lot of supporters thinking, well, yeah, it's Brighton. They were kind of down there last season. They, they were in just above us, weren't they? Um, and at home, it should be a game that we, we're looking to target to win. We've had such a poor run at Turf Moor. We had a really uh, poor run at Turf Moor, particularly the second half of last season. Um, I think it's 10 matches now without a, a home win. And we only won four home games all last season. So we know we desperately need to improve that home form. We, if, if we do the same again this season, I can't see us... Um, bettering perhaps what we did last season away from home, we're certainly going to have to uh, have a big improvement to, at Turf Moor. So, um, yeah, it's an opportunity in the first home game to go out there and uh, and get a victory. And I think you always start the new new season. It's always exciting. It's going to be especially so um, with, well, a, a decent crowd back at Turf Moor. I think that we had uh, 3,500, wasn't it, for the um, uh, Liverpool game towards the end of last season. But it's the first time we've got serious numbers back at Turf Moor. We've obviously had the uh, pre-season friendly. I don't think they announced the attendance of that, but there were, I think, only a few thousand there. So it's going to be a, a big occasion on uh, on Saturday afternoon. How do you think we'll do? Are you confident of a win? Um... I think we'll either draw or win if I'm hedging my bets. Um, if I've got to choose one or the other, and you're going to push me down one route, I'm I going am. to predict. You know that. I'm going to predict a home win. I think we're, we're going to turn things around. I think the, the the fact we're going to have fans there that's going to be a a boost to the players, and I'm going to go for a two one win. Excellent, good stuff. Yeah, I th- I completely agree, Dave. I think. You always want to start the season well. You want to get those points on the board. And yeah, I get that point about pressure. You you know, you don't necessarily want to play a must-win game in the first game of the season. But also, what an absolutely fantastic opportunity to get those first points on the board and take them off one of your peers around you as well, your, your rivals and, and somebody you'd expect to be around the same um positions as you as the, as the league goes on so um I think we've looked strong pre-season uh, you know I, I know there's some grumbles about personnel coming in and out and lack of signings but the core of that team the the reliable squad that we have the ones that perform all the time are looking strong and yeah I'm I'm very I'm very convinced I'm actually going to go for a, a um 
a resounding win. I'm going to say 3-0 to the Clarets. So um, how do you think we're going to do, listeners? You can. We want to hear your score predictions, please. And in true preview show fashion, we want goal. Uh, we want, sorry, we want the scorer. We want the goal scorer. And we want to know how he scored, please. Header, left foot, right foot backside we don't really care tell us your predictions you can tweet us at none and ever or you can email us on a brand new email you can email us at preview show at none and ever dot net fantasy premier league update so let's move on to the second half of the uh preview show dave um goodness me time is flying on a bit we've been going half an hour already this is uh this is good stuff oh because of course we're going to be bringing back the none and never fantasy premier league now at the end of last season, Sean Danaher narrowly pipped new panellist Adam Dennett to take over from Bennett Howarth as the Nornay Never Fantasy Premier League champion with a very impressive and consistent campaign. We followed throughout the season all of the ups and downs on the preview show and we're going to be doing the same again this season. Dave will be keeping an eye on the Kings of Games week, the good points, the people to keep an eye out for and basically keeping you up to date with everything FPL related throughout the new campaign. That's right. And if, you, if you're in the No Name Ever League last season, and many people were, and many of our listeners uh, participate in that throughout the season, um, if you've already selected and submitted your new FPL squad, uh, then you should have automatically been re-included in this season's league, which has been restarted. Um, it is totally free to join. Um, and I can confirm already there's been well over 200 entries for our league, um, including several new managers. But you can still join us. There is still time. Uh, the league code, which I'll give out, is uh, 7 I X A E seven. I will spell that out. That's seven India X Ray Alpha Echo seven. Matt will put the um, link out as well when we uh, when we post this podcast and put it live. Um, you have until six thirty p.m. That's the deadline on Friday, uh, just before the season kicks off with the Brentford v Arsenal match. You have to get your deadline. Uh, I think it's usually half an hour before the teams are announced for that match. Um, so you've got all that time to submit your squad and team to join our league. Um, I think actually even if you're later than that, you can still submit your team. We will allow late submissions, but obviously you lose out on the points if you don't have the first week. So it's definitely a case of uh, getting in there sooner, getting your team selected. Uh, well, certainly so getting your squad selected and then selecting your team for the first week. Um, and I think it's yeah definitely a case of the more the merry. If we can get as many of our listeners as possible involved, that'll be really good for the rest of the season. Yeah, certainly will. Let's see if we can get record numbers this season. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll get that for the next preview show, what our record number of entries has been so far. But um, yeah, we've got well over 200 already. So let's see if we can make this a bumper season. Um, I've submitted my team, so you're definitely not going to come last. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I just, I just really enjoy keeping on everybody's progress through the year. Um, Dave, how many weeks are you going to leave the league open? I think we left it open too long last yeah, we're going to say two games, three games. What's what? I think we did a couple rule? of games last. Yeah, we did a couple of games last season just just for those uh, late comers so they could get their uh, teams in. So we'll take a view. If the numbers aren't going up, we'll we'll close it off. I think we'll probably maybe give it give it a couple of weeks just in case there's any uh, yeah. stragglers who uh, who don't get involved straight away just to give them a, a, a chance. But no more than two weeks, listeners. That's all you're getting. So do not delay. Get in there. Come and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, let's round off the first preview show of the season, Dave, with quiz question. Take it away. Well, quiz questions, actually, because for this season, Ooh. we've decided to do something slightly different with our weekly quiz. Um, each week, the quiz questions will be split into two with varying levels of difficulty. Um, it can either be a two-part question or actually two, as it is this week, uh, two separate questions. So you can answer one or both, uh, but please do get in touch with your answers so that we can name check any clever clarets on the next episode. Uh, so this week's quiz questions are as follows. Uh, question one, which uh, hopefully is the easier one, uh, is in which year did Burnley and Brighton first meet in a top flight fixture at Turf Moor? That's our easy question, the first one. And the second question, which we think is slightly harder, is uh, Willie Irvin equal the most goals scored by a Burnley player in a single season in 1965-66? 
Uh, that was matching Jimmy Robson's tally from 1960-61. But how many goals did he score in that record equaling season? <gasps> I think I know the answer to number one, but number two is very, very difficult. Well, how do our listeners submit their answers, please, Dave? Uh, well, they can get in touch with us uh, to let us know uh, the answers uh, by any of these methods. You can tweet us or preferably send us a direct message on Twitter. Uh, if you send us a DM, that means that no one else sees your answer. Uh, that's, of course, at no one in ever on Twitter. You can email us on the dedicated email address we've got now for the preview show, which is preview show, all one word, at no one or you can also reply on the post for this preview show on either the No Name Never Facebook page or on YouTube, and we'll reveal the correct answers at the start of the next preview show. Excellent stuff. Well, that wraps up the content for the first preview show of the season, Dave. Um, any other business? Um, nothing specific in terms of community news, just something I wanted to kind of, uh, well, get off my chest and say before the start of the season. Um, as we know, the start of the new season is always special. Uh, but this Saturday afternoon will also be a particularly monumental day for those fortunate enough to be going along to a Burnley home game for the first time in almost 18 months. Although a few thousand were able to be at Turf Moor for the match against Liverpool towards the end of last season in a very socially distanced way, and there were also a few thousand who chose to attend the home friendly against Cadiz last weekend, this Saturday will be the first time a significant crowd has gathered to watch a football match at Turf Moor since the start of the pandemic. There'll be some of you who have chosen not to go back to live football just yet, and there'll be many more uh, for whom it may prove to be a slightly nervous experience, and that's perfectly understandable. Uh, there will be many, many more fans in the UK and further afield who continue to follow the fortunes of Burnley Football Club from a distance. Whatever your association with the Clarets and however you came to support this great club of ours, we hope that you can continue to provide you with some unique insight and offer a special link to a football club which is close to all of our hearts. So to all our listeners, wherever in the world you are, enjoy the new season and up the Clarets. Oh, Dave, that's... <clears throat> no, you're crying. I'm not crying. God, it's me. What a what a lovely sentiment to finish the preview show on, Dave. And I I echo those words um, just so much. I thoroughly, thoroughly cannot wait to see you all back on turf more this season. I think it's going to be something special to have us all there once again. So wherever you are, do enjoy it and say hello. The none and ever bunch are a friendly gang. Um, I believe Tom Claret now taking selfies at Turf Moor as well as a bit of a local celebrity. I think he's, he's charging to read out his tweet and record his tweet, <laughs> his, his famous tweet as well, which is now also getting stolen as well from other content creators, which we might have to start some action to stop that before long. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a celebrity now, is, is, is Dave. Uh, is Dave, sorry, is Tom. So yeah, do do come and say hello to us if you see us at Turf Moor. We'd love to hear from you. Um, that is all we have time for in the first preview show of the season. Um, we will be back with the first analysis show probably Tuesday of next week where the new team, including new panellist Adam Dennett, will be on hand to have a look at exactly what happened at Turf Moor. Um, ahead of that analysis show, do please get in touch with your experiences of the first game back. We want to hear how it all went. We want to read out some messages and some emails from everybody um, just to see how it feels to be back at Turf Moor. Um, my thanks as ever go to the usual contributors who uh, made this preview show come to life. To Albion Analytics for the opposition view. To Turf Moor Stadium announcer Dominic Walker for his specially recorded preview show announcements. To producer Matt, who does a phenomenal job behind the scenes in knitting all of this together. And also, I don't say this often enough, running our social media accounts as well, who he does a fantastic job because I'm rubbish and forget all the time. Um, you wouldn't hear from us on Twitter if you left it to me. So thank you, Matt. Um, and finally, of course, to Dave Statman Roberts, who has given up his time again for a third season of preview short news and who has worked particularly hard over the summer to think of some new and interesting insights for you and to present this information to something a little bit different and it's just such a pleasure and I love the preview show so Dave thank you very much um 
Our final thanks, of course, go to you, the listener, who we would not be here without you. Um, your support is very, very much appreciated. You've stuck with us for so many years and continue to do so in your thousands, I might add. Um, I will be announcing shortly on social media just how many listens the Known and Ever podcast has, podcast has had, but it's... Uh, it's in six figures and it's a significant number. So we are absolutely honored that you continue to include us in your Burnley life. Um, it's a great pleasure to serve you. Um, that's all we've got time for. I have been Natalie Bromley. This has been the preview show brought to you by the Known and Never podcast. Until next time.